In this experiment, we'll be determining the acceleration of freefall. We'll be doing it for this piece of card here. It's a weighted card. Uh, the weight is there so that it can drop nice and straight when I release it. The way that we'll determine the acceleration of freefall is we will drop our card through a known height so it passes through this light gate and we will measure the height that it falls through and its final velocity enabling us to use one of the equations of uniform acceleration v squared equals u squared plus 2as v squared equals u squared plus 2as usually people know that as equation four out of the four equations so how will we do it with this equipment what we'll do is we will drop this weighted card so that it passes through the light gate so since i'm dropping it from rest we know that its initial velocity will be zero we will know the height since we will be able to measure it with the ruler and then we just need one final variable and in this case that's the final velocity so that's where the light gate comes in so the light gate has a light here and a light sensor here this is connected to the digital timer here the yellow cables here connected into the back of the timer they just provide power to the light gate and then there's a red and black cable coming out back here which are plugged into channel a here what that enables the light gate to do is act as a switch as follows. When the light beam is broken, the timer starts. When the light beam is re-established, the timer stops. So that's what it's timing. It's timing how long it takes this piece of card to travel through the light beam. It's important that you appreciate that's what we're timing. We are not timing how long it takes the card to fall through the height h. It's how long it takes the card to move through the light beam. So if I just reset it here, you can see it took 0.416 seconds for the card to move through the light beam. Okay, so how does that enable us to work out a final velocity? The card is five centimeters tall. I can show you that. So it's five centimeters, 50 millimeters on the ruler. And since we know the length of it, if we know the time that it took the card to move through the light beam, then we can do the distance, five centimeters, divided by the time here, 0.264 seconds. Obviously converting the centimeters into meters, and then we have the velocity. That's, that velocity corresponds with when the midpoint of the card is going through the light beam, okay? Assuming everything is uniform, which is a fair assumption. So we have the velocity when the midpoint of the card traveling through the light beam that's our final velocity so what we'll do is the known height is going to be the distance from the middle of the card above the light beam so if I want to do 10 centimeters now I've placed this ruler this 50 centimeter ruler is 10 centimeters above the light beam okay so if I start at the zero on this ruler that means I'm 10 centimeters above the card uh, above the light beam sorry so the midpoint of this card needs to be at the height that I want to do, and then I drop it through there. So let's just reset that and show you. Okay, so there we go. So it took 0 0.037 seconds for the card to fall through the light beam. Okay, and that's what I'll use to calculate the velocity of the card at the point of the light beam. Okay, so I'm going to do this experiment for six different heights and then what we can do is not just use a single value and put it into the v squared equals u squared plus 2as solve for a by collecting for a range of heights six different heights I can plot a graph of v squared versus h and then I can since we'll be getting a straight line we can compare the equation v squared equals 2as since u is 0 that means u squared is 0 that would mean we can compare that to y equals mx plus c and then we can use the gradient to solve for a which will that value of a will average over the whole range of heights that we used so that's why we'll take a range of data okay so let's start taking some measurements then okay so the first height is going to be 10 centimeters above the light beam so i need to place the mid Point of the card at the zero on my ruler. Remember that the ruler is 10 centimeters above the light beam 
and for each height I will repeat once so that we can get an average. We use the average time to calculate the velocity of the card and then we use that to square and plot on our graph. So here we go. Point zero three seven. Okay, let's repeat that. So we reset the timer and again put in the midpoint. Point zero three seven. Now we're going to 20 centimetres, so that's 10 centimetres on my ruler. Okay, now going up to 30 centimetres, so 30 centimetres, uh, sorry, not 30, we're going up to 40 centimetres, so that's here, and then we'll do 50, and then 60 at the top. I'll be dropping from out of the view range of the camera. I'm keeping the camera focused down here so that you can see the timer, since that's the measurement we're taking. So this is 40 centimetres. So that, that one skimmed the light beam, it didn't fall properly through it. Okay, so that's all the data collected now. And in the next video, I'll show you the results and how I analyze them to determine a value for G. There is a worksheet that goes with this, so you can actually have a go at the data analysis yourself, and that's really great to get as much practice as you can. So I do recommend that you download the worksheet and have a go at the analysis yourself. The worksheet is free, it's available on the website, TES and TBT. Check out the instructions on the description of the video and have a go yourself.